Okay, so we are in the second half of the day. I've had two trades so far. Actually, I had three trades so far because I'm in currently in on AXSM. Uh, but that's my swing trade. So we'll get into that in a couple seconds or a couple minutes after we go over MBOT. And as I already talked about, guys, MBOT, whoo, what a rush. MBOT, I just made $2,344 on this trade. And this was in the matter of a minute. This was about $2,344 in about a minute. All right. And with that being said, how did I make this money? How did I make this profit? Well, first things first, something I want to go over, guys, is you guys can see it says 9,500. As I said, this is my second trade on MBOT. My first trade on MBOT, I try to buy in on this play sitting up at around 17, uh, 1740. So right around 1740, I bought in on this play trying to see if it was going to U-shape on up. I want to see if this stock was going to U-shape and go on a nice rip at the end of the day. And as the stock started coming back on down, I said to myself, it looks weak right you guys saw me in chat i was like this looks weak this does not look good so what did i do i cut out i took about a 500 dollar loss right away so i cut out took about a 500 dollar loss right away i'm 0 for 1 kicking things off right then what started happening then we started getting this dump all of a sudden probably about 30 45 minutes later what happened Foop! this thing dumped right on down right this thing dumped right on down let me actually switch to a little bit of a different time frame and you could see right when it cracked this line the line where it bounced that 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 it finally cracked this line and we know the stronger the line is and then when we get that final crack it's going to be more violent because look how strong this is look how great this is look how you know how many times it bounced off this line so the fact that it cracked through this line it just started dumping now with that being said, if you didn't watch the recap earlier, or if you have not been in chat, where was the one line? Where was the one mark? I've been saying this whole entire time, guys, all I want to do is see, you know, 15 bucks, right? I just want to see $15 because I know $15 is a very nice support line. And that's what I've been looking at the whole entire time. I've been looking for around 15 bucks and this stock got halted right around 1530. So this stock fell, it fell from $17 to 1530. I'm saying in my head, if this stock gaps down after this halt, people are going to say this stock just fell from 17 bucks to now 1530. If it gaps down, let's say below $15, that's either going to be a bigger gap down or about a $2 and $50, a $2 and 50 cent like gap down. People may think, Hey, this is a bargain price now, right? So that's the mentality I was using when buying this play. Is it a risky play? 100%. Is it, you know, um, a very easy play to get into? Not at all. It's a little bit of a scary one. So MBOT, what happened? I'm sitting here. I have orders typed out. I had a 1,000 share market order typed out. 1,000 share market order. And I know the stock got, un got halted at 145 and 58 seconds. It got halted at 145 and 58 seconds. That means it's going to get unhalted at 150 and 58 seconds. So I even had this little thing up. And I was just watching it and I was counting it down and I was like, three, two, one. And then right where it came, I saw it gap down. And that's when I was just boom, 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 market order. Just clicking away. Click, 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 click. Cause I saw I had a gap down. So I saw I had a gap down. So now I have a $2 and about 50 cent drop. I'm banking on people are going to be saying that this is going to be a bargain price. It's the number one top gainer. We just fell $2 and 50 cents. I'm banking. People are going to say, this is a bargain price here. What happened with this play? It spiked all the way back up towards around 1564. I had 5,000 shares in. I got in at the price of 1425 before the stock spiked all the way back up towards you know highs of uh, you know 15 uh, you know 1570. Now, with that being said, was I able to get out right at 1570? No, right. I was not be able to get out at those areas, but I was able to get out at um, some pretty solid areas. Let me see right here again. Let me download this picture and bring it up for you guys. And you guys can see right here, here's my P&L. And what do we have? We have all these buy orders. So again, this is me just clicking away. And you can see getting filled 1425, 1425, 1425, 1425, 1425, 1428. And then what happened? And then I sold when it was up towards $15. Now, when I, and you can see I sold at 1513, 1517, and then 1474. Now, I changed it to 2,500 shares when the stock started falling. So I didn't want to click 
five different times again. I said, let me just click twice, 2,500 shares. So again, I bought in on 1,000 share increments, and then I sold on 2,500 share increments in case the stock started dropping. So what did I want to do? I got in on this play, and now I'm saying, okay, traders, I believe are going to see this as a bargain price. Then it popped back on up all the way up towards around 1570, you know, a dollar 50 rip. I'm up a ton right now, but what do I notice? The stock has about a 50 to 60 cent spread, right? The stock has a 50 to 60 cent spread. This is huge. You know, if I market order out, I'm going to be down 50 to 60 cents. So I'm saying to myself, all right, the, the ask right now on the stock is all the way up towards 1570. But the bid is all the way down towards around 1520. So I said to myself, if this, you know, uh, uh, when this up is up a little high, let me lock in half. So that's when I locked in 2,500. Let me lock in some profit. And the last 2,500, if it goes below $15, that's when I'm going to get out completely. And you can see right here, you know, that's where it fell right below $15. And I just market ordered out right there. So that's how I got in on this play. So I got in after the hole, dropped on down, spiked $1.50. After it spiked on up, I started locking in my shares to be safe. Then it started dumping again, and then it got halted, right? So, you know, that was definitely a pretty crazy play. But with that being said as well, um, you know, what was, uh, how long did it take me? How long did it take me to, you know, make this, you know, big profit? How long did it take me to, you know, to make this money? Well, I got in at 13.51 and I got out at 13.52. What other job in the world is going to allow you to do that? What other job in the world is going to allow you to bank that much profit in this short amount of time, right? And that was after I already took a loss, right? So, you know, it's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing what the stock market can give you. If you guys have the confidence and you guys are willing to pull the trigger and you guys are willing to attack, you know, you can make an absolute killing in the stock market. And there is so much money and there's so much opportunity for you guys to be able to make in the stock market. I definitely want you guys to see that. I definitely want you guys to understand that. So MBOT, this is a play that I was saying is kind of like my arch nemesis because it would not ever give me a pullback. It just kept spiking and spiking and spiking and spiking, fell, spike, 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 you know, fell barely, spike, spike, spike. But we never had that strong dip U shape. Finally, I got it. I pulled the trigger, shot back on up, sold my shares, and then it continued to fall right here, got out just in time. But yeah, as you guys said, I kind of threaded the needle on that one, right? Really threaded the needle on that one. So it was a little bit, um, was a little bit tough, but at the same time, you know, I got in and I got out. You know, I, I wasn't really trying to hold for this thing. I said, if it goes back below $15, I'm out. I, I said in my head, I will hold it as long as it stays above 15 bucks, right? I locked in half my gains and I said, hey, if the other half, you know, runs all the way up to 16, 17 bucks, hey, let me continue to bank. But with that being said, if it can't hold above 15 bucks, I'm just going to get out right away, right? So again, that, that was my mindset. I definitely think, you know, traders are going to pop the stock on in because it just fell $2.50. All right, great. It went on a nice rip. Let me lock in half right here. And with that being said, if this stock, you know, does, you know, come back on, uh, comes back on down, I'll lock in anything that falls underneath 15 bucks. All right, so absolutely awesome right there. So I was able to make $2,344. Let's get it, baby. And guys, I am well ahead of the $10,000 mark in January. Ow! So I am killing it right now in this market. 15 days in, already up, already destroying this, you know, January. And we still got, again, what, 15 days left? Ooh, guys, you know, new Decmar coming at you hard right here, going full beast mode, activation, like it's getting crazy. Now, with that being said, I'm also in what right now? I am currently in on AXSM. I'm in currently at 3,100 shares on AXSM. That's what I'm in right now. And again, you know, sent that out um, and I got in at the price of 790. So we're actually sitting right at my entry right now. Now, why am I in on 790? because I really like this play. Now, why do I like this play? Because I've seen this happen many, many times before in the past where these sort of stocks do this. And what do I mean by do this? Well, AXSM, every single day, it's on the morning newsletter, right? I put AXSM on the morning newsletter and like most people are just like, yeah, it's another day of AXSM that deck likes and nothing's gonna happen with the play, right? <laughs> so like a lot of people always like kind of disregard AXSM. I, I love AXSM. I, I love this stock a lot. And why do I love this stock a lot? 
I love this stock because the stock went on a massive rip from $2 all the way up to $7, right? Then it did a whole crazy little day. Then it moved on up a little bit. Then what happened? It came back on down. And it came back on down. And it's dumping it. But then what happened? It, it held. It didn't just dump. You know, it, yes, it had a $2 fall. But it also just spiked, you know, 7 bucks. It's going to, you know, probably come back down from $2, right? So AXSM, I really like this play because it has, again, what a good credible press release on why it's up. Why is it, you know, up first off? Well, what's the press release deck? What do we like about this? We have achieves primary endpoints on its phase two trial. It's like I'm hardwiring, like breaking my circuits right here. And why is that? Because that's one of the best press releases we can see, right? We have positive. We have primary endpoints. We have achieves, right? So these are all great things right here, guys. When you have achievement or you achieve something, and I believe where it's achieve or achievement. So what I really, oh, there it is, number 26. Now, achieves, you know, primary endpoints on phase two trials. You know, that's absolutely great. And I love that. And we have important or statistically significant improvements, you know, absolutely all the good stuff right here that I really, really enjoy. Now, with that being said, so I have a great press release. The stock gapped up and ran about $7. And now the stock is starting to U-shape on up. I could imagine either A, a small gap up tomorrow and a nice spike. Or a possible big gap up and then, you know, a nice possible spike. But this is, you know, starting to make that U-shape pattern. Well, Deck, what if it's red? Well, if it's, again, if it goes red tomorrow, well, obviously, again, that would be a losing trade. You know, a lot of people always kind of, you know, point out a little bit of the obvious sometimes. What if it's red? Well, again, and then I lose. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is a pattern I do like. Um, and with that being said, I, there was something very similar to this in its past. ALDX. So this was about, let me see. I want to say this is about uh, two years ago. Uh, oh, here, here, is, here it is, you know, ALDX. This kind of is a little bit of the same example. ADL, ALDX, had a, this had positive phase two trials. Gapped up, fell big, next day Doji Star, and then it went on a big time rip after, you know, about a day and a half for its, you know, um, for its uh, phase twos. There's also another play, a um, couple recent ones as well that were, you know, doing this and... Uh, could definitely get some nice potential. Like MRIN had a gap up, came back down, then the next day was green. That's kind of just what I'm looking at. Now, again, if you don't like it, I'm not trying to persuade you or anything. I just want to tell everyone the credibility on what I see, right? So again, this is what I see, and this is the reason why I'm getting it on this play. Now, it is, you know, finally a good little green candle. It does have, you know, some resistance right around this $8 mark, as we know. It does have a lot of support down towards around $770. I currently have 3,100 shares at the price of $790. And I want to see if the stock's going to break out and, you know, go on a nice time move. But that's probably going to be my final trade of the day, um, you know, looking for a, most likely a swing trade. KTOV started dumping on off. So, unfortunately, that stock wasn't able to, you know, continue to move on up. Um, CCCL is looking, you know, pretty good as well. CCCL could possibly go on a nice spike in the near future. There's a lot of hype over there. So, again, top two stocks I'd watch this afternoon. MBOT, done with. Look at that thing start turning. That stock is halted. That stock is done with. That stock is not worth our, my time. I think the top two stocks I'm going to look at is AXSM, and the other stock I'm going to look at is CCCL. That is what I'm going to be looking at for the rest of the day. But, you know, very happy. 